What's up? Another episode of The Upgrade. My name is Gary Muttley. He is... Len Carmichael, Landmine Studios. So, so take it back a bit. <laughs> uh, now, when I first met you, we worked at Tower Records, which I've talked about a million times on here because those were the glory days. Those are the good days, dude. <laughs> the classic got a, days. Got, got away with a lot of shit, but also, like, we did our jobs. We, oh, we, sure. Sure we, we did. Were, we were the glue holding that goddamn customer service desk down. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. Uh, were you? Did you work Saturday nights with me? I, I don't remember. I don't remember. I mean, I, I definitely opened the store with you a lot. There was a lot of times when we would open together. I know. Sa- I, I remember. We, what was that fucking tall Frankenstein dude? What Frank? Oh, What's Frank. The, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I closed with well, him. Actually, he That's works in the comic book industry now. Oh, okay. Well, wild. that kind of makes a little bit of sense. <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 I didn't. You know, I, I kind of had it good. I didn't close a whole lot, and I know that I was like a thing. Like, I feel like we finagled our way into like not having that happen. I, I eventually did that. I asked yeah. because there was a point when I had to close Saturday nights. Mm-hmm. So if I was going to close Saturday nights, it was going to be a party. So everybody <laughs> on the floor. Len, everybody that was working on the floor mm-hmm. had a, a red solo cup. Okay. <laughs> and there were there were various beverages that were in those red solo cups, and none of them were work beverages. No, no, uh, I, I definitely experienced that. That was we good. definitely we would send somebody out to the deli and to the liquor store up mm-hmm. Broadway, and then we'd be mixing in the back office. And then you know, one night, hey. one night, the assistant manager shows up. And I'm like, oh, right shit. In on it. I'm like, oh, shit. And then uh, remember Holly? I remember Holly. Brian? Holly's like, oh, no, I invited him. I'm like, <laughs> okay. So then he's back there mixing drinks. And then, like, God, the personnel man. manager shows up. And suddenly she's in the back room rolling joints. And we're like, wow, Saturday <laughs> nights. <laughs> this is it's how it's party time. This is Saturday Good nights God, at Tower. That, uh, you know what? Days. Those were. And. That was sort of the last, um, that was like the last like jobby job kind of like real like I applied and interviewed and so because like right after that I went into touring. So basically my That's last like, thought. my last like sort of like uh, working for the man was kind of like that, you know, which and is, it was pretty, it was pretty loose. Yeah, it was, it was pretty loose. Oh yeah. Like then I, I used to, it was great when I would work with you because you would always be like, all right, you're going to be on customer service because we would just sit back there fucking bullshit. Like, oh, sure. We had like, it was like our own little, like it was like annoying, but not because the most of the day was people just coming up to you trying to pay for stuff and you go, now you got to go pay over there and just yep. point across the floor, you know? Well, and like, you, you had worked. I worked at Tower Long, Long Island, Island first, yeah, right? And then I went, yeah, and then I went back to Long Island again, but yeah. Oh, okay. So like I, I had worked and that story was totally different. Because we didn't have that, like it would, you know, the store on Fourth and Broadway was massive, so it was like, oh yeah, you needed to have that desk, you needed to have someone guiding what was going on, and and you, and it was like you parties. walk in, you walk in, and it's me and you behind there, but it's like pretty, it was pretty funny. I remember like, God, dude, I remember the 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 fucking three card money dudes that were always posted up outside, oh, yeah. yep. And I want at one time I was like, this is back when I used to smoke. I went outside and a little smoke break, and I'm watching them dudes like trying to rope people in oh yeah and i i start i start bullshitting with one of the dudes i forget who it was who worked there and i look over and i'm like i'm like you see these motherfuckers i'm like they're out here every single day i'm like everyone buys into this shit and the dude one of the dudes comes up to me puts his hands on my shoulders puts me up against the wall and he's like yo he's like if you don't break out of here you're gonna get broke oh shit! <laughs> i was like all right, well, I work inside, so I'll see you later. And it's like, wow. put my cigarette again. I never talk shit about those guys ever again. I was like, I'll let them do whatever they want to do. But wow. they, yeah, the, there was a three card money <laughs> guy. I'll never forget that. If you don't break out, you're going to get broke. I was like, wow. all right, well, yeah, they, I'm out of here. Didn't fuck around. But it was, was I mean, I, I remember like, days. yeah, we would, um, I would show up late to work, but I'd show up with fucking bacon, egg, and cheese. So, you know. <laughs> Just to smooth things over, you know. Like, ah, don't worry about it. It's cool. Yeah, it was a good. That was a. Yeah, that was. If you can, if you can have, uh, you know, any sort of like semi-irresponsible, you know, hourly job, 
that was the shit working yeah. in a you know working in a record store you know and on top of that like the biggest one in all of lower manhattan like that's like crazy like the amount of people that came in and out of there like between celebrities and musicians oh, or whatever yeah. like you just say like i remember like one day like marilyn manson came in and we were playing still suit we had the still suit ep yep. on and he was like came in and he came to the desk he's like what's this right now and i was like oh it's a band called oh, still no suit. come on i'm like <laughs> come on mr warner let me show you let me show you to the, the where it is wow that's yeah, funny i, I never knew like, that story oh that's yeah great. yeah that, that awesome. was yeah, yeah, we would, yeah, we would just play whatever we wanted. Oh, we'd yeah. Like, I, I, play our I've, friends' bands. I've talked play that our own bands. Before, like, <laughs> yeah. It's like 1130 at night. You come in and like Napalm Death Song. Like, <laughs> or you just playing your demos, you know? It's like, yeah, like, we oh, didn't like, care. Like, oh. it was whatever. Like, and it was, it's funny because like, really so, they would tell us always, like, don't open CDs and play them. I'm like, are yeah, you fucking right. kidding me? Like, this place is like a library. I'm like, don't open CDs. Oh, I'm like, I'm like, if I want to hear something right now, I'm gonna go over to the Credence section or whatever and pop open a CD and put it oh, on. God, we did that all the time. We had a all heat shrink the there. You could sh- you could wrap that stuff. That's up what again. I mean. Like, hey, Ron, can you shrink this for me? Like, oh man, that all the time. Those that are the good- did you ever see the documentary? I did. I did, and I, I kind of wish that they had they had maybe they, con- reached out to someone in New York because yeah, New they York didn't really had, spend much time on New York. I, I get it; it's a West Coast company. They were really focusing on the West Coast and the origins, and like then it yeah. was like shifted to like why it went out of business and blah blah blah. But like I don't know; it would have been nice to. I, to, I mean, you could do a whole other documentary just about oh, New I know. York, but oh, it I was know. so funny seeing all similar shit. Like, oh yeah, that that was the whole vibe. That was like. That was kind of like the uh, the appeal, the allure of like work, like to people. It's like, oh wow, that's a cool fucking job. And then like, think about how much I used to get paid. I'm like, how the hell did I have an apartment? I'm like, oh yeah, my apartment was like two hundred dollars a month. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. It was In the Lower totally, East Side, you know. New like, York. New York yeah. was totally different back then. Yeah, but, you could you could live off of an hourly job and like I just remember like that was my thing every day. So I I had my a Walkman. That's how long ago it was. Yep. I had my Walkman with my mixtapes, and I would walk. From where I lived, I lived on on Norfolk and Rivington, and I would walk every you know every day in the morning and like listening to tapes. Sometimes I'd have like one tape, just flip it back and forth over and over, and like <laughs> yeah, and like walk walk through the park. I remember I, I would stop like sometimes I'd get a forty and like sit in fucking Tompkins nice. after work. Yep. That was the shit, dude. That, that was, was like a, that was the way different it used New York to be. man. I loved it. Different, different. Oh yeah, totally. Well, you you were doing Edna's Goldfish at that point, right? A, a, a version of it, yeah, like the earlier right. version that didn't become like the t- full touring version, but yeah, like around '96 is when it started to shift to like a different okay. version. So what what happened? What shifted? Uh, just people were um, not interested in. Well, they were interested in doing something different. Not interested really in that band. And okay, um, I went. I I moved to New Haven briefly because I was in school and like it. Just like things just didn't. We weren't lining up right. So basically, like '97 is when the second version the one that really like toured and put out like a couple records and stuff because my buddy dave who was who was in the old version dave galia he was at nyu at the time so he was like you know we spent a lot of time there and yeah that that became the second version really the version 2.0 and and you guys how much touring did you guys do oh it felt and you know it, it felt like a lot longer i mean we were only that version was really only together for three years okay. but we toured basically non-stop like i've seen like our tour itinerary there was one point where we were just gone for four months like we went to europe after being like doing a whole full u.s tour we had like a day off and went to europe and like i remember being there like i this is fucking crazy so like i, I was in germany we played a show and i was like you know what i should call my mom i'll call my mom and she's and she's like, hey, how you doing? Whatever. And I'm like, yeah, good. I'm like, we just played a show. She's like, oh, she's like, that's early. She's like, you play like a day <laughs> like a daytime show. I'm like, daytime. I'm like, it's like ten. O- I'm like, it's ten o'clock here. She's like, ten o'clock. She's like, where are you? <laughs> I'm like, I'm in Germany. I'm like, did I not tell you that I went to Europe? I'm like, I should probably. She's like, you need to tell me if you leave the country. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. So like that. I mean, like that's how hard we were going. We were just like non-stop non-stop and sometimes yeah. like two shows a day and that that wore us out you know so by the time 2000 rolled around we were fucking over it too yeah we did our so. last few tours and then we were just like everybody wants to take a break or get on with life or whatever and 
it was fun, you know. I it was my first experience with real touring and like a record label and like record labels coming after you and trying to like sign you and stuff. Like yeah, it's a learning experience, you know. So cool. I I I have a sidetrack uh, because I know Gary won't be into this, but I'm pretty sure that I saw Edna's Goldfish in '96 or '7 at some like little shitty dive bar. With Metro Styli and the Pilfers. 100%. We played with them a lot. We actually did a tour. I don't know how much Metro Styli did, but we toured with the Pilfers. This was in, this is 97. Okay. 90, yeah, 97 probably or around 97. Because yeah. I was dating a girl who lived in North Jersey, like 96, 97, and she was obsessed with Metro Styli. I was already in the ska. I'm still in the ska. So when she was just like, you know, I'm, I, I was like, all right, fine. But I, I love the Pilfers going into it. And I believe you guys opened, then Metro sure. Styli played, then Pilfers played. That ma- that makes sense because Metro Styli was kind of kind of doing the thing around then. I remember because I, you know, I lived I you know, lived in the Lower East Side. I'd see Andy around handing out flyers and stuff or trying to get because Andy Shaw, the uh, bass, he was a bassist. Don't know him personally, but, but but he was he was just like a, he was like one of those dudes like he was always hustling like his music or whatever project he had going on. And I remember seeing that before we had really kind of taken off. So that makes sense that we would have played first and then they, they play cause they probably already had something had been, going, you know? Yeah. They had been start moving. Stuff was moving for them. For the record. I didn't like them. I just went because <laughs> her, I was, I was mainly going for the pilfers, but <laughs> I remember enjoying your band. So, oh, well, thanks. That, that's where I'm going to leave it. 24 years later. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I no, no, it's, no, it's funny. You. No, and yeah, totally. Um, the only, yeah, yeah, yeah. The only thing I remember about those days was like we played Jersey a lot. Mm. We played like, every single like. Well, this was cheap, in, in in New York. Oh, this is in New York. I, I was in New York. Oh, okay, okay. I thought this was in Jersey. Oh, no, that's right. We took, said, the, we took the path in. That would have without it, without it have been at Coney Island. No, wasn't that? It wasn't. No, it was just bar. like some random like place that i never ever went back Gales, maybe or something like that it might have been that nightingale sounds like it might be right oh we played in nightingales with like mephiscopheles and shit back in the day i love mephiscopheles do we we play that place nightingales that place was just straight up like a bar with like not even a stage it was just like yeah yeah, no it was an area it was an area in the back like yeah i played there once (laughs) yeah it was just a bar no no stage nothing that's uh, that sounds about right if uh, it it was before I was consistently going into the city for shows. Yeah, it wasn't like like under Acme or anything like that. That doesn't sound right because no. that that might have been even gone by then. Because under Acme, no, un- no under, under Acme, Acme was no. still, still. I was trying to look up. online for the flyer. I'm uh, sure I have I, it. Like if I look, if if I looked into like if I can somehow pull up our, it was on an important. old site. We had like a yeah, it's a show disc, not show discography, but. A show uh, chronology. Mm-hmm. I, as soon as I look at it, I'm like, God, we played so much sometimes, <laughs> you know? Like, didn't make sense. We would do crazy drives. We'd start a tour in the West Coast. We'd just like, all right, two days to get to, you know, from New York to LA and just go wow. crazy. That's wild. Couldn't do that now. I couldn't do that no. now unless it was a plane involved. <laughs> we, were <just> like, <laughs> we were straight up just like, yeah, we're going to get, you know, we're just going to do. Just we're just going to do it. Man. Just get in a van and just switch drivers. The only thing you do is stop for gas and eat whatever snacks there. Eat, we ate so many combos. <laughs> it's a fucking combos constantly. Just I can't constantly. even look at combos. I know. Combos to me taste like tour. It tastes like the inside of a, <laughs> it tastes like the inside of a van to me. It's, it tastes oh like God. Like it just it makes first off it makes me feel stoned. I don't smoke weed anymore, which is crazy because I live in California. But um, I mean. Uh, I eat it, <laughs> hey. Hey. but um, <laughs> but it makes me like it just makes me feel fucking like eating combos is that sensory, you know. For me, uh, it's it's either combos or Doritos. Uh, Mountain Dew. I can't I never have oh. a Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> because that was the thing. It's like you gotta drink Mountain Dew. It's got sugar. Yeah, stay, awake. Keep, stay awake. Like ugh, oh man, gross. Can't How am I alive? <laughs> <laughs> We ate such you, crap. You pickled your insides. That's how you're alive. Yeah. Craziness, man. Yeah, that was so. Yeah, 97 would have been. Yeah, 97 to 2000s when we did that band. 
And then after that, it was my yeah, I did reunion show, which is right. a, oddly enough a Victory Records band. Um, that must have been an interesting was, experience. Yeah, all well, for a variety of your reasons. Yeah, uh, that's that's what I'm getting at. Um, so we didn't have the really fucked up experiences that some of the people had right. with not to talk too much shit, but like whatever, I'll talk shit because um, Tony's fucking insane. Like that's an ins- that that's actual. For sure. I've never that's an actual fucking insane person. Like I've never had like, a bad experience with Tony, no. but I also never had to deal with him the way <laughs> other people. Because because after I left Tower, I ended up working at Red Distribution. Okay. And one of the labels that I handled was Victory. So every now and again, I'd talk to Tony, and and he was always cool with me. He'd be a complete psycho when dealing with like other people at the company but with me he was yeah. always cool and like uh, well we never really and you know we didn't we i've seen him be fucking weird or you know cr- like crazy or like just just like he has like crazy ideas and he thinks yeah it's a it's a megalomaniac narcissist mix of you know like and and to add to it like they were very successful at the time so mm-hmm. it's hard to let you know you just think like nothing can ever tear me down from here you know <laughs> but like these you know, there was a lot of bands that that did have very like bad experiences. Oh beyond, yeah, you know, like they like whether it was contractual or whatever. You know, they just and uh, that's something that I don't know enough about to speak on that. We never had that issue. They definitely did try to write into the contract certain things that we were not comfortable with. Okay, and that our lawyer, um, hardcore is Dave Stein. Uh, oh, yeah. He he was like you can't sign this the way it is like he, and he looked out for us he like actually like i don't think he was our lawyer always like he just for that but like he was like this is not good he's like you shouldn't be selling off your publishing this way right. shouldn't be doing this and he was able to get it out of there and you know and tony was like i fucking hate lawyers or fucking cocksuckers and blah 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 and whatever yeah, and we're catch, like they catch your shit that's why yeah and the, and you know it's probably easy to, to have that attitude and, and and pull that over on some kids that are had no experience at all. Like Which you get he, some like did plenty of times. Yeah, you get some nineteen year old kids from the middle of nowhere that their demos are selling like crazy, so they're like, We gotta sign these guys and they can sign up some shit deal. But I was like, yo, I'm I'm a we're a little older and we've been through this already with our own right. bands before this. So like we're not going to just sign something without a lawyer looking at it, you know? Cause he was like, I don't do shit with lawyers. I'm like, well we do. So if you want us, then that's that. And that was really the only weirdness. I think I experienced, um, personally. Okay. So uh, you got, but you got I, but I, yeah, but I do know of the weird stories and, Oh yeah. I, yeah. many friends of mine have told me many, many stories. I mean, I've seen him <laughs> crazy, but not crazy in a work direction just cause no, I know that Red, one too. Red used to have conventions. Oh boy! And we would be at the Red convention, <laughs> and one year we went and we played touch football, and it was a bunch of Red people versus a bunch of Victory people, and we went to some like field in Connecticut, like in a park, and then all of a sudden he's got a cooler of fucking Foster's oil cans, and we're just like, okay, sure. And, like, we're all getting banged out while playing fucking what was supposed to be touch football, but ended up getting a little, you know, rough. Uh, a little rough. Yeah. He's but, got, uh, you know. he is, he has got some stories of him being, like, very, like, um, he's got some, he's got some weird, some weird things that he's done. Oh, yeah. Um, I've, I've heard many stories, including stories from people that worked for him. So. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, he's no, um. Nothing would surprise me. Yeah, wonder what he's doing now. <laughs> uh, sitting on a giant mattress filled with cash after he sold the company. It's true. Also true. Getting cash. Hey, oh well. Good for him. Good for Someone, him. Someone's got our masters somewhere. So get my, re- get my records back. <laughs> oh my god. I don't give a shit. <laughs> so, at what point did you start doing tech stuff? When reunion show came to an end, okay, which came, that was 2003. So 2003, we did our last tour. We actually put our last show ever with that lineup of reunion show. Mm-hmm. Um, 
in Pomona out here at the glass house. Um, and then we drove home and I got into a huge fight with uh, the other singer in my band, Mark, who I've since made up with and we're, we're friends. So that's not like a weird, it was a, it would have been a weird source of contention 10 years ago, but now it's like, whatever. Right. Um, we're grown ups now, but we, you know, we were young and we were touring and driving each other crazy and we fucking got into it and me and my guitar player quit and they got some other guys to play and they were that band for a minute. But in 2003, that summer, um, I got hit up by one of the guys in brand new, uh, Brian Lane, the drummer. And he was like, Hey, he's like, you know, we had toured with them a bunch and we were friends with them. He's like, you want to come and be a guitar tech? And I was like, I don't know what that means, but what, <laughs> like, what, what do I do? He's like, I don't know. He tuned guitars. He didn't even really know. He was just like, I, we need a tech. We need someone to like do shit for us. So we went out and, you know, that first tour we did and I did a few tours with them. And then I, I was kind of, it's funny because like I, I did that and I was like still in the back of my head. I was like, I'm going to start another band or I'm going to do something else. Right. And it wasn't until I did, you know, I, well, I, I just go back a little, like halfway through working for brand new, I made enough money where I was like, well, I'm getting out of New York and I moved to Chicago. So okay. I was living in, I was living in Chicago and the band that we had played with in, when I was in motion sit, when I was in uh reunion show, this band, Motion City soundtrack. Yeah, they they were from Minneapolis, not that far away. They were in town, and they asked it like, "You do you want to tour? Do you want to like tech? Is that what you're doing now?" And I was like, "I don't know." I'm like, I, <laughs> I, I was like, I'm like, I think so. I guess that's what I'm doing. I guess I'm I'm teching. I'm like, I, it makes me money, you know. And like my rent was super cheap there. I was like, you know right. what? I'll keep doing this. And then that became my first long-term touring thing to okay. me. Like the like working for brand new was like a, the start of it, but it was still in my head. I was still a musician who was taking time off from touring but, in my own but band. Then, but then, and then the money started money. coming in and I was like, ah, oh, I'm like, this is not that bad. And those, That's and the guys in motion city are literally like my bet. Like the, as far as people that I've worked for and people that I've, I hang out with, they're like my best friends. Like uh, Tony, the drummer, lives like right, right by me over here, and I see that dude all the time. We talk, we talk to each other nonstop all day. He's like one of my closest friends. Like I'm grateful for all of that. Like that's yeah. like the experience that I I, ha I got from doing that is what made me continue on. Yeah, I I laugh about the money because I remember. Warren Lee once told me he's like if if you knew how much money I was making doing the tech stuff, you would yeah. you know, get into this and never play again. It's hard though. It's it's hard to make a shift because especially when the first bands you work for are bands that you're friends with. Right. Like I have a lot of friends who were techs who never were in bands that toured, and their first jobs were like one of my buddies out here. His first job ever was working for Limp Biscuit on like the fucking tour where they had the toilet bowl. You know what I mean? Oh like that was his first fucking tour ever, and I'm like. <laughs> okay i'm like obviously like yeah you fell into it pretty good like you had you know you had yeah. you had a good background with that like i had to start with people that i was friends with and my whole thing was like standing inside of the stage and looking at them going fuck i wish that was me you know right right and it took a while to get past that and i was still kind of just like well i could still get back into it or something and uh i'm not saying i never did but i never did it to the level of you know a, having a label and t touring nonstop on, on record, you know, like I've right. played, I've been in bands, I still play in bands, but it's still like it's different, you know. Yeah, it was never like heavy duty. No, no, not like that. Not like the way, not the way, you know. Right. Not the way I was doing it, but you know, the have being a tech afforded me an entire career and a, a, a whole life. You know, that's been my whole. It's been everything I've done, and from there, it's like it's one of those jobs where it's a it, it really is a word of mouth thing, and like you, you're yeah. kind of like. Your resume is your is you. You know, he's like talk to people and be like, yeah, I worked for so and so and this guy and that guy. And at this point, I've worked for people that I grew up listening to, and it's like really crazy. You know, where I'm like, oh, I'm like worked for Eric Avery from Jane's Addiction. You know, I worked for Frank and Frank Bello, and you know, I worked for Anthrax. Like I yeah. toured with Anthrax. I'm like, I grew up. That's the like reason I play bass. Like, is this dude? And I'm like working for them. It's like weird. Yeah, but that's then crazy. the same, it's like now it's just like they're just people. <laughs> they're 
They just yeah. keep on. Some oh. of them suck. <laughs> <laughs> some of them aren't the greatest, but whatever. Some of them are fine. Some, most of them are great. Who cares? <laughs> I'm sure they're all dying to get back out there and tour, or maybe not. Some of them are miserable people, but <laughs> you know, whatever. Oh man, so that. so you started doing that, and you just kept going with it. And how? I, I know it's really a word of mouth thing because other friends that I I know mm-hmm. that do it, it's all the same thing. It's not. It's not like you know. It's not like you. You're, feel- yeah, you build your reputation. You build like so when from from Motion City, you know, I was doing that. I did that for years, and I would fill in, you know, here and there. I'd fill in the time with other other bands, you know. I'd right. do whatever. But then, you know, two thousand six is when I got um I got asked to do Fall Out Boy because they were like, you know, they were like, we need a new bass tech. We, you know, we fired our last guy, right? And I was like, I had to think about it because I, I was kind of thinking about just stopping touring altogether and just like trying to, you know, I was living in Chicago and I was working at a venue. I was like, I can work in a venue and make a little money and whatever. Not have to but, move around all the time. Yeah. Like, you, where see, you in? I was, I was working for actually for jam productions. So I was working for, um, mostly shows at the Aragon ballroom, which is like okay. a, a, like a Roseland equivalent, maybe yeah. bigger, actually bigger than Roseland. Uh, but we do like the Vic Theater. We did uh, this place, the Park West, I believe it was called. Um, the Riviera Theater, which is down the block from, um, yeah. Ro- uh, not Roseland, from uh, Aragon. Aragon. Um, you know, I was a stagehand. I was a stagehand. I was doing load in, load out, show calls, like whatever, making a, a couple hundred bucks a day when there were shows, which was nice. Again, Chicago is a very cheap place to live. So I was able to do this, you know, once or twice a week, make some money cool um when i got the call about the fall boy thing that ended right quick i was like oh oh that's how much money i can make i'm like all right sign me up and it's been that you know whenever they have off obviously like i i'll go work for other artists but like that was the next that was like the next level so it went from like being like working for uh like a warp tour level band to -hmm. working for an arena level band which is like a whole other thing i had never I didn't know shit about it. Like, I didn't know we would have six buses on tour and trucks and all this shit. Like, the first time I saw it, I was like, oh, boy, I'm like, I think I'm in over my head. <laughs> I don't think I know what I'm doing. But then you realize, like, you actually do because on tours like that, like for Motion City, I would do – there was times I would do everything. I was the tour manager. I right. was the stage manager. The keyboards, drums, ba- everything. Like, monitors. I got to yeah. run back there and do that. Fuck! If they had me doing the lights, I don't. Uh, maybe I don't. I don't remember. Oh yeah. But then you, you know, you end up with a band, uh, you know, like a, like a Fall Out Boy, and they were just like, my, my job on that, I was working for one dude, and that's yeah, so all I, I had to, to worry about. And it's it seems intimidating at first because you're in these giant venues, you're in these amphitheaters and whatever. And then you realize you're like, oh, this is the same job. I just have. Actually, almost in a weird way, less responsibility. Yeah, I kind of like this. I but like the thing is, you can't fuck up. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Never, I mean, obviously I have, but you shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. When you're working at that level, you're expecting something to be on point always. You know, I get it. It's obviously. it's a big boy job. Hmm. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, I I um that was the, that was the first big one that was like okay. I can do this on this level and, you know, I excel at it. So it made me comfortable to be able to take other stuff because then it was like the Fall Out Boy thing. And then right. they they took some time off, you know, I'm, I'm sure years. I'm sure learning about GoPros helped you too. <laughs> Yo, they, so that, yeah, they, they took the time took time off in like 2009 they were off for a few years so that was when i started really kind of mixing it up with other bands like i did sum 41 primus anthrax all them bands and then i did uh was it seven dust for a minute that was an interesting one yeah i remember you telling me about that because because of the tunings and stuff oh my god the lowest the tune to the z flat dude (laughs) (laughs) 
six string guitars tuned like the low end of a seven. Yeah, but like no, even no lower seven somehow. strings, no eight strings. No, just six strings like fucking the the, the thickest gauge strings you can find. Just tearing so my tuning, fingers up. What tuning was that? Oh, I mean, it was like it was like drop A, just okay. like pretty it pretty pretty low for a six string. I mean, and at the time. This is like not not a lot of people were playing eight strings and nine or whatever like right. whatever the, whatever the Deftones are doing now like tuned yeah, down got, to like he's got eight strings now but uh, seven does never change never switched off never, the six string they just did the six string even they now. would just tune it like the like you know the bottom yeah they would just tune it crazy way. low but yeah um, so the did band that. I'm in right now that I'm doing I'm actually tuned in drop A in a six string. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm I'm rocking thirteens to stay stay <laughs> <Nice>. stay tight. Thirteens, <laughs> yeah. There you go. I just worked on a bunch of guitars for this dude, who had everything from like a seven string Floyd fucking Ibanez, like a Ibanez yeah. Prestige with a Floyd and two outputs. It was like this bonkers, like tuned all weird, all low, all thick. Like I was like, these are bass strings on here, dude. These aren't guitar strings. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing with this? Um, yeah, I've had to cool. do that. I know when I when I recorded some stuff with my seven string, I had to put a bass string on oh, the yeah. bottom. Yeah, you can, you can you can do that. I mean, I, I keep it I keep it light over here for me. I'm a little bit of a you know jangly. I don't go too heavy. I have some guitars uh, that have them. I have a hand like a fucking cinder block. <laughs> so I've learned to lighten up over the years, man. But when I'm when I am playing because i when i play with my band I'll, i i do it's pretty loud so i do hit pretty hard but if i'm at home recording it's light touch finesse <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't have any of that <laughs> no so like... i was like doing that what did I, so then seven dust and yeah from seven dust i did anthrax and then while i was on tour with anthrax is when i got called to do gnr the first time and then I did that on, up until Fall Out Boy got back together. And then pretty much, luckily for me, GNR stopped. That was like 2013. They stopped. And that was the end of like that era of them before they got back together as a the, well, the not I think the, the new lineup or the new old. I think I remember you telling me that you, you were like Guns was just banging all the time, weren't they? Like you were all over the place with them. We yeah, we did. I mean, we that was that tour. The first tour I did with them in Europe was the first time I went to. A, there was a lot of places I went to for the first time. I went yeah. to Tel Aviv, Israel, for the first time ever. I've, I've since been back a few times, but we went to Turkey. We did a show in Istanbul. Wow. We did a, we did a show in Beirut, Lebanon. I've never been back since. That's crazy. We did some wild shit. We went and then we you know we did. Um, we did Abu Dhabi on on a tour. We did um, two, we went to India. Yo, India was oh, a trip. Wow. That one that one was a trip. That's the one. It's funny. One of the dudes that I tour with, I, I hang out with. You know, he works for GNR still. Mm -hmm. He just texted me about that because we were talking about how how wild it is right now in India with COVID. But oh, like, yeah. he was saying, I'm, and you know, we were like, man, I'm like that. It fucking sucks. But like, haven't been to India. It's not a shock, you know. It's a. That's it, what it, I've heard. It's it's a country that it's or it was already as far as like sanitation and hygiene and stuff. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of it's pretty third world. So like the fact that it's running rampant there is like not that. It's not it's that a shocking. Really, it sucks. Like, it's fucking. When we were awful, talking but, about you know. COVID earlier, and and you mentioned Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. it's the same kind of thing because Puerto Rico yeah. is, is overall a very poor country. Sure. And those poor countries are getting decimated. Totally. But yeah, with, that was like one of the, that was probably of all the places I always say this with India, I never had any desire to go there. I was never like, I, I want right. to go to like some people are like, I want to go to India. I want to see whatever. And I was like, yeah, I'm like, cool. If we can see the Taj Mahal and whatever, which we did, I was like, that's cool. And I'll probably never have that opportunity again. Yeah. Uh, never really wanted to go there. Never thought I would go there. Um, we went. <laughs> I saw it on my schedule. I was like, I guess we're going. Uh, we went. We were there for three weeks. And then uh, I honestly hope I don't have to go back. Yeah. It's the only kind of, like, it was the only time I've ever experienced what I guess is culture shock, where mm -hmm. it was just so, so different. And I've been to a lot of fucking places yeah. that I, I can say, like, 
I've been to China. I've been to you know Indonesia, fucking everywhere. And India is the one that really took it out of me. Where I was like, I don't know that I want to go back. It was just so wow. hectic and so yeah, and just everyone was in fear of getting sick. They were just like, drink or eat the wrong thing. Oh, yeah. You're gonna be God. shitting your brains out. And For like, it's a re- like it was some people got sick. I I made it through. You know, I made it through. We got to the next the next place we went to was Indonesia. I get to Indonesia and we're like at the hotel and we're like, holy fuck, I can't believe we were just in India for three weeks. And we're sitting at the hotel bar and I'm drinking a drink at the hotel bar. And someone's like like, ice. Someone's like, you're really drinking that with ice in it. And I was like, oh, my God. And you know what happened to me the next day? (laughs) The shits. You had the absolute. I made it through. Yeah. I made it through India and then I get to Indonesia and I got the shits from the oh, hotel man. hotel bar ice from celebrating our escape. I mean, it was a good experience. I'm saying escape. I'm I'm talking so much shit on this, but like, <laughs> I I even I don't want. I'm not saying like. I w- I wish it. I wish I had a better. Like we said it, me and my buddy. I was like, I wish I had a better like experience there where I was like, this is beautiful. I want to come back, but like we were like, it was it was. It was trying. It was a trying thing. I have yeah. some wild, wild photos, man. People walking cows to the, you know, outside the venue. Like, oh wow, a stage made out of like, it looked like Lincoln Logs, man. It was like, I, I was like, uh, yeah, I've seen stuff like that. Oh my god, it was like just a dirt field with like just like lo- logs. I can't explain it any other way. Yeah. Branches I, tied together with like, um, like te- you know, tethered together with yep. like twine. I was like, I've I've seen I I feel like it might have been Indonesia that was like that. I, mm-hmm. There's we definitely had, a video of Iron Maiden uh, setting up a show. I'm sure it was Iron Maiden. They were setting up a show. I think it was Indonesia, and it was the same kind of thing. Like it was all just like held together with like yeah. That one there was something like that too. And shit. So when we went to Indonesia, we had the two day. We had two days off there. We flew in, and then the show day, we go set up the show. There's a torrential downpour. I mean, Southeast oh. Asia, so it's like the when it rains there, it's not like um, <laughs> it's it it goes it goes hard, yeah. and it flooded the stage. It flooded the field enough where the barricades, like they have like midfield barricades, because so many people are going to be yeah. there. They have like to to divide the crowd so they don't just push yeah, forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The barricades had like fallen over and were like floating. That's how oh, fucking. Shit. That's how much it rained, and the the stage was starting to look like it was starting to buckle from like, like the the, the head. There was one of the rigging guys in the tour. The stage manager was like, "That is not safe. Everyone needs to get off the stage. It could collapse. Whatever. We're not going to put any weight on this." Oh wow! So we were like, "Fuck! I guess the show is canceled." It was not canceled. No. The next. That night, we go all go back to the hotel. That night, we get a call. We're like, okay, Sting is playing at an arena tonight. After he leaves at whatever time, one in the morning, two in the morning, we are going to go load in at that arena indoors. We're going to set up our show, and we're going to do a GNR show at 11 a.m. Holy shit. And that is exactly what happened. <laughs> It is the only that like Axel came on stage. He was like, "Good morning, everybody!" <laughs> like, oh my god, it was wow. fucking bonkers. Like we just like, I guess Sting left their whole their PA and everything there for us. So we just literally loaded in guitars and amps and our stage set or whatever. But we wow. rolled up and set up a show at like two in the morning. You know, whenever we had just took a break, like everyone slept in like on the floor of some crew room in the back, you know, and. Whatever, and I remember. Remember, they gave us KFC. That was. That was <laughs> I'm not gonna forget that. We got KFC like buckets. Of, or you know, one of the Mayhew brothers is like, "We're getting KFC for the whole crew. We need oh KFC God. for everybody." Like, I'm just sitting there like three in the morning eating a fucking a four piece, you know. And uh, we did that. We did the show. We did a show at eleven in the morning, and then as soon as it was done, packed it up. And we went to an airport and flew to wherever we. I think we went to Japan next, wow. and that was it. We did. The, we made it to our flights after doing that. Okay, we did. We did some fucked up shit with that band, that's, man. That's I got some questions. Just like yeah. a, a question or two. How? I mean, obviously, 
Do you bring your own cabs on the plane? Like No, 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 no. That stuff You just rent it when you're there and you just bring heads with you. No, no, we have we have our own stuff, but it it, it flies either uh cargo or it um goes Well, that's by what I mean boat. underneath Oh, it goes by boat. Well, not on um, not it would there would be like so what we would do for something like that. Actually, for that we had two rigs. So we had an A and a B rig that were going they're flip-flopping. So like if you need to make this happens a lot when bands do like Australia and stuff because Australia is so remote and it's so expensive to get stuff there. You'll ship all your stuff like a sea container full of gear or many sea containers. You ship that stuff ahead of time and then you use a B rig to do everything else. So and then you fly that B rig to wherever and that flies cargo. But basically at the end of the night, we're just loading trucks and those trucks take stuff to an airport and they and at the airport they load the plane so that stuff just goes they're goes just in. hopscotching it where yeah you've got the one but, and then the other one jumps one, ahead yeah i mean we send we air freight quite a bit of stuff like with these bands like they're never renting anything at okay. that level anymore they, they have their own i think when we did the last show i did with gnr was in iceland in mm-hmm. 2018 and obviously Iceland's an, an island and yeah. everything has to get you know, you but you send stuff slow they call it slow boating. So you put it on a cargo ship in sea containers and we had something like twenty five sea containers of stuff. Like those big ass sea containers. Yeah. Just filled with set and lights and all that shit because all that stuff you have to bring it in. They don't have really the infrastructure in Iceland to do a concert of that size. So we had to bring everything. Wow. But yeah, that stuff, you know. It's flying around. I mean, we we went to an air. I went to an airport, to a cargo section of an airport, and unloaded a plane. Like I've like never. I was like, <laughs> "How do we do this?" I'm like, "Never done this before." And they're like, "I right, just, it comes down the thing, and you fucking unpack it, and you take this. They they shrink wrap and then put these straps, and you take it all off, and then your gear's there. And you're like, "Fuck, that's crazy." But yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I just I never really knew how that worked because I oh, know like yeah. So we've talked about this on the show before. My uncle was in Cool in the Gang for years, but he played oh, wow. a trombone. So yeah. for him, he just fly with his stuff. Yeah, he just flies with a trombone. Yeah, and most of the guys that play horns just fly with their horn. Like they don't even check it; it just goes on the plane with yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them. You can put it in overhead just or whatever. Put it in the yeah. overhead, and then base. No, I mean, there's it, for stuff like this. Like when it's this big, there's companies that literally handle. Um, like uh gear the logistics of it logistics yeah like like rocket cargo or sound moves or whatever like they all do that's that's literally all they do mm-hmm. like sometimes you can call them to do stuff within town like i can call if i had like a piano to move within town i could just call and be like i need to get it from point a to point b you know there's people that are just that's their entire business just doing that mm-hmm. and just, fuck man those people are probably struggling right now too I mean, oh they, sure but the, a lot of them have shifted to doing like moving medical supplies or mm-hmm. just general cargo. Just you know, like stuff. yeah, because that, that you mean their business when things are booming is like they don't have time to do any of that stuff. But now it's like, well, no one's really moving things from point A to point B. So uh, you got any tires you want us to move around, or like fucking <laughs> cars, or what do you want? Like you know, a lot of those places they pivoted, they were able to do it, but. Uh, They'll start seeing stuff come back to you when you just like, especially when you start doing overseas stuff, just because you got to get stuff. You know, those are the only reliable companies. Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't send your stuff. Like I, I don't trust checking things in with like American Airlines. No, oh, no. But sometimes, you, but sometimes you have to do it. Like there's, you know, if I was gonna do that, like going way, 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 way back in the conversation, I was talking about I was supposed to do that Bush tour in Australia, right, with Stone Temple Pilots and. Stone Temple Pilots sent all their stuff, slow boat. It cost them a lot, a lot, a lot of money to send all their gear to Australia. Bush kind of, we got all these cases for flying and we were going to hand check all this stuff. Now the shit got canceled. So Bush really only spent money on the cases. Right. No, Stone no, Temple Pilots no, spent, no, money, no. Stone yeah. Wild spent money on shipping their gear back and forth. Oh. And I was like, oh, that's, that's why we didn't ship it. <laughs> because... <laughs> The chances of it getting canceled is probably pretty high, considering it's it was a I think it was a little bit of um 
a little too forward thinking that we might be going to Australia, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a little too early for that. So now, if Madball of... wants to go to Australia, <laughs> <laughs> Madball can go play a park in Australia. Speaking of moving things, I actually have a piano that I I got off of Craigslist okay. for I don't know a hundred bucks, but the guy was like, "I just want a hundred bucks, but you got to move it yourself." So me and three <laughs> friends rented a U-Haul and I rolled it up the U-Haul thing and moved it to the house that I was living at with my ex-girlfriend. Then we moved it down into the garage and then eventually up into like this breezeway. My intention was to put it in the basement where my old studio was in her basement, but I never like trusted myself to put a piano in a basement because <laughs> I was like, yo, this thing is going to fall right on anybody. That's So I just left it. She, she's moving to Utah, selling the house that I used to live in with her. And she, I was talking to her the other day because she sent something through and she had some like pictures and things that she found of mine still in the house. And she's, I was like, yo, can I have that piano if you're moving? She's like, yes. So now I need to move this piano. So if you know somebody in New Jersey that can move a piano, I might have, <laughs> have a job for them. I'll, ha- I'll have to think that one through. Piano moving, that's a hard, that's a hard gig. Yeah. I moved a piano one time. And the funny thing about that is this is when I was... On Long Island, and we moved. It was me and the rest of my band. It was a reunion show. Got hired as a band to move someone's piano. Some old lady had a piano. Wow. Wanted to move it. So we moved the piano. And later, later that day, I get a call from Christian McKnight. He's telling me he's like, <laughs> he goes, DS, DS. He's like, um, I got these. He's like, I got these guys playing at um, Backstreet Blues tonight. They need a piano. They need someone. They need help bringing a piano down the stairs. I'm like. <laughs> I was like, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I, I'm not doing this because I've already moved a piano today. <laughs> he, was like, he was like, what? I was like, dude, I'm, I'm dead serious. Yeah. I'm like, of all the things you could have asked me to do, I oh literally just got done moving a piano. I'm yeah. not moving another I, one. I hit my piano quota for the day. Yeah, my one. <laughs> my quota is one. So my back could take. So oh, Gary's geez. seen the inside of uh, Landmine Studios, and my gear is just, like, insane in there. I don't know where I'm going to put this fucking piano, but if I can get it, it is my goddamn piano, and I get paid it. my hundred bucks to get it. I just need <laughs> to spend another couple hundred bucks to get somebody to move the fucking thing. Because, like, sure, I could rent a truck and gather up a couple old guys like myself <laughs> to push this thing onto the truck and then maybe push it into the studio. But the chances of us injuring ourselves is so high in comparison to like 14 or 15 years ago when we were like 30. Uh, I, yeah. I, you know, my back is going to be fucking wrecked. That's don't, yeah, don't that's do gonna, it. <laughs> that's going to be painful. We have, uh, I got to figure my, that out in my rehearsal space right now that I sh- have with my band. There is a piano in there, an upright piano, and yeah, it belongs to it. Yeah, it belongs to my drummer, who, in, I don't know what month it was, one that long ago, uh, he moved to London, England. Uh, so Ooh. his piano is just there, and I'm like, okay, I don't know, I don't know the status of what we're, you know, what's going on. Like, you know, we still have our space. It's me and my buddy Ben. And we still have our spot, and we're like, well. What happens when um, what happens when we don't have the space anymore because we can't pay for it? Um, do we? What do we do with this piano? How do we move it? I don't. I have no idea. So I'm I'm with you. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know. Like I don't think me and Ben are moving this thing, and I don't know where we're gonna put it or what we're gonna transport it in. So yeah, yeah, we just have this piano that's just there. If nothing Wait, else, he, I just, he didn't take the piano to London with him. Yeah, well, he didn't just put check it, back it check it in. Uh, yeah, <laughs> check it in the overhead. Yeah, <laughs> wild dude, wild. Putting that in the overhead. <laughs> Crazy. What a hell of an overhead! Oh my god, uh, that's funny. So you mentioned your band. Yes. What are you doing I would, now? I have a band, a band called Knives. Uh, it's Knives with an F, not a V. Um, I play bass. I just play bass. Um, the band actually is just it's just three of us. It's my, um, me, this guy Warren plays drums, and Ben who plays guitar and sings. And we're all 
just all roadies for all techs. Uh, Warren works for Slipknot. Okay. Um, he he's the DJ tech for Slipknot. Works for Sid. Uh, yeah, <laughs> DJ tech. It's a thing. Yeah, that's, um, that's the funny thing. He's also. I mean, I met him. He was like the uh, playback uh, playback engineer for Fall Out Boy. He was like running the tracks and okay, and and um, the teleprompter and shit. He yeah. was. That was his. That was his. Game. He's like really adept with Ableton and Pro Tools. Like he's like a studio kind of guy, and he's a fucking killer drummer. And he nice. lives in England right now, so uh, <laughs> that doesn't help. Uh, then Ben also Ben Ben and Warren worked together with Lincoln Park. They were a text from Lincoln Park. Okay. And um, then they we were all at one point all working for Fall Out Boy. So for us to start a band, it was like perfect because we had the same schedule. Right. So we were able to like record and play shows in our downtime. And then Warren went to go work for Slipknot. So it was like, fuck, <laughs> like that was the first. <laughs> Stumbling one because you just never have the same schedule, you know. But right, we were able to like we, you know, we we did two EPs and just you know, it's it's more fun just to get it. Just doing the stuff is like I need to do it, you know. It's an outlet. Do you guys play live or are you just we out here? We have yeah, yeah. We've been talking about though, like so if if the tour happens this summer, mm-hmm. I'm I'm bringing a bass and I'm putting it in the guitar vault for my you know just to like have my bass with me so right. that and i'm bringing my little pedal board it's a little helix guy mm-hmm. bringing that thing and if there is a show to play on a day off we'll just go do it it'll be fun just to oh, play for cool. like just to do it for like um you know to our crew it'll be like yo everyone yeah. come to this bar we booked a show in some like hee-haw town like that'll be fun you know like yeah we, we, we're waiting for we're waiting for stuff to open back up here because i feel like we could we could probably do something fairly soon yeah but we were playing we played like bars around here we played we played the um what's it the whiskey we opened for uh the damn things which is okay that yeah yeah, yeah, that side product yeah every time i die yeah keith yeah so it was funny because ben was actually teching for the damn things and we opened so he's like in his (laughs) like rock and roll like he's on his fucking like cool guy in a band yeah, looking, you know, t-shirt and whatever, and then like switch to full-on black shorts of roadie he's, clothes. He's got to like, go to work mode. Yeah, he's got to go to work. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it was it was cool, man. It was cool for the, of those guys to let us do that. Oh, uh, that's was, awesome. That was like a it was a fun show. It was a few hundred people, and like, you know, for a band that no one gives a shit about, it was fun. You yeah, know? listen, that's cool. I think I think that's uh, that would be fun to be able to do that on days off, just. I know, that, oh, and, and like just like even thinking about being able to do that kind of gives me that like good feeling of hope that maybe something will change soon, and we'll be able to like yeah. do that. Like just like having that to look forward to, or something like just to be able to like, oh, yeah. we're gonna go on tour, and like maybe we'll book some shows. It'll be fun. It'll be cool. Like I don't know. I just think about that shit, and I'm like, that'd be fun. That'd be cool. <laughs> with you. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. So. One other thing I wanted to go into was the photography stuff that you've been doing to kind of ah. get past COVID. Yeah. I mean, the photo Even though the you were obviously stuff, doing it before. Right. But I, but made I know a, you I made kind of pivoted more towards that when when COVID started kicking in. Yeah. So basically, you know, I was just, you know, I, I've always been like into cameras and photography. I kind of... T- did it in high school took a lot of time off i didn't really own any like nice cameras and then like a few years ago got a a a decent like dslr like a canon that i was like bought lenses and then i started shooting film like going backwards and doing that like you know you know like just all varieties of stuff and uh at one point before actually before covid really took hold i had started to print a print store like i started doing like um do we lose him here Oh, he'll be here. back. Okay. Um, so I started doing that print. I started doing my print store where I was doing at first. I was really just um, just using labs and making prints through labs. But then I started doing it myself. I got I have a you can't see it here, but I have a, a like a large format printer. Right. That I do all my photo. I do all that shit at home. And I was like teaching myself how to map photos, how to print stuff, how to fucking package stuff up to send it. I was like just trying that hustle, you know, because like. That kind of brought me in a few bucks. 
Yeah, it kinda, I believe it. It kind of yeah. it kind of did because like there was that point where like when shit was going down, everyone was like, "Well, just, you got to support artists and you got to support whatever." And I'm like, I'm not saying strike while the iron's hot, but I just happened to have my setup already ready to go, so yeah. people were able to you know I had a, the online store and I had. I was like, hey, you know, like I got all these prints. I do like music photography. I did some wrestling stuff. I did some, you know, just some art kind of art prints and street photography. Like I was like, anything you want on my Instagram feed, fucking let me know. I'll print it. If if I can print it, I'll print it for you. If I can't, I'll give you your money back. Yeah. I, I know because I ended up getting one of those. From, yeah, which you is, get the, which the is cool. shad, it's, on, it's I got to repaint my wall, but it's, it was up in my living room for quite a while. That was a and fun. It, it'll spin, go back spin. eventually. Speaking of every time I died, that that same that same sh- little show there, uh, Andy Williams, yeah. uh, aka the uh, is he the butcher? Or is he the, the blade? Butcher. He's a butcher, right? Yeah, the butcher. Um, he he wrestled that night too because he wrestled uh, Nick Gage. Oof. That's it. I, I have sorry, to, sorry to hear that. Yeah, it was, I was that was a fun one. That was a fun one. And it was like a you know no ring no rules kind of yeah. whatever. That was pretty fun. But yeah, um, so I was doing yeah. So I started doing that and like that was cool and selling prints. And then it kind of then it kind of tapered off a little bit. And then the um, the protests started happening here like the. Right. Black Lives Matter protests, you know, mm-hmm. there's the, the murder and, you know, yeah, shit, was, right, shit was right around June. Was, it was, well, May, I'll tell you, May 30th, yeah. um, May 30th here, there was a, it was organized by Black Lives Matter LA, organized, they were, we're going to do a, a rally and a march down Fairfax around like, you know, around that area of LA. Right. So I was like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go shoot. I have my cameras. I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to go document this this is like historic shit's happening you know yeah and uh there was a ton of people there and we started marching and we made we went all the way up to the beverly center we stopped we blocked traffic in the middle of the trap everything was like pretty peaceful like there was some you know there's always gonna be some knuckleheads you of know you do, you, there's gonna be people you know they're tagging shit and the people who organize are like yo don't tag stuff like it comes back on us you know i know you're you mean well, or whatever, but you know. And then there's people climbing light posts, whatever. You got right. thousands of people. This is happening. Yeah. So we make you know make the turn back around. We're going up. We're going up Beverly Boulevard, which is, a, we're a few blocks away from CBS Studios, which is where the shit went down because right. we made it there, and we didn't know this. Some people I knew actually had taken photos of this. The police had staged probably like two dozen cars there and they were waiting for the shit to come back around to block everyone in Oh, and basically like i don't know it's hard to say because everything happened pretty fast but like we got to we got to where cbs is a corner of fairfax and beverly and the police are blocking everyone there's a fucking lot of yelling going back and forth there's a small uh, there's a small car accident that happens and then I turn around and there's a cop car on fire and there's someone there's people running around it so I jump out in the middle of the intersection and I snap I'm sure you've seen the photo I've oh, snapped yeah. some photos of this car on fire yeah and, that's a wild wild photo and it was like really close I mean it's fucking hot as hell it's really close and uh, so I, I I back off because like now the cops are moving forward. There's another. There's actually another car that's on another cop car on fire to the left of that intersection, and I was like, "Yo, this this is gonna this is actually kind of turning bad right now." So yeah. I start backing off, and as I'm like making my way back, I have some other photos like I can show you that it's like the police like holding those like um those uh, like uh, rubber bullet guns, the yeah, green ones, yeah, yeah, and they're like po- you know like they're like ready to go, and they're fucking so aggro, and then I start hearing pops and i hear the bullets the rubber bullets hitting the the city bus is in the middle of the street it's like there was like a good like 60 seconds of chaos and i was like i'm getting the fuck out of here so i'm i hightail it out of there i'm like fuck this you know wow i go back home and actually i don't really process what's going on you know i'm just like whatever fucking that was crazy i'm sure shit's going down i text my buddy mike same dude who was at the madball show text him because i knew he was there and i'm like yo i'm like what's going down he's like yo he's like there's straight up people are actually breaking windows now and like it's 
it's spreading. Yeah. I was like, well, I'm, to me, I'm like, oh, I'm glad I'm out of there. I go home. I actually go meet up with my girlfriend and we go get a drink and like go get lunch or whatever. And I post a photo to yeah. Instagram and within like an hour, it blows up thousands of likes. I've never had that many likes on anything and yeah. people commenting and whatever. And someone was like, are you going to sell prints of this? And I was like, I was like, you know, Ding. if I do it, I was like, if I do it though, I'm like, I'm not going to be, I ended up donating a lot of money. Lot, right. Let's say like, thousands and thousands of dollars oh, which wow. I, which to me i was like could have been mine but the right thing to do right now to me was i was at a, a protest that was peaceful i was at a march that was peaceful up until the very end the shit went down and it, it was a it's a bad mark for them you know yeah. so like to make some good come out of it that i i was like i'm donate back to them so right. that went to black lives matter in la and to some other organizations in LA and I was able to like fund a book. I did a small run of a book that I, you know, a photo book of all the shit that happened in LA. Yeah. Um, and made a little money from that. But yeah, just being right place at the right time was able, to, you know, as far as like, that was probably the most money I made on photos out of the whole year. Yeah, that's, and like, that's I think crazy. back and I'm like, out of, I could have made so much money, but like, it's not about that. Like I just captured a moment that was right fucking crazy you know and like they have a lot of outtake photos of that you know which i wouldn't post i wouldn't share because people's faces are in them and i don't want mm -hmm. anybody i don't want that coming back on anyone like i had posted yeah, one course. and someone was like yeah you shouldn't do that i was like you know you're right i shouldn't do that mm -hmm. and i've since reposted it with the face blurred out like i kind of yeah. did a, a blur out but it's not as it's not as effective like i don't know it's just like i don't i don't want that coming back on anybody whether yeah, or not they uh, were whether or not they were bad actors or they were genuinely like this was the enraged, whatever it was, I don't want anybody getting in trouble for that. No, so, you don't. You don't need it to be evidence for something. But of course, I mean, people see that photo and they're like, "Oh, so you think destroying public property?" I'm like, "This is this is a taxpayer's money." I'm like, "Yeah, the taxpayers fucking just burn the cop car." So right. you know, right. I don't know what to tell you, like. You know, I, there's a there's a person who's dead and there is a cop car that's burned. I don't know what. Yeah, I don't know how you're equating these things, you know, but. Well, I, somebody's somebody's always got something to say. Yeah, always, always, all, always. All so. the time. Our our friend Sonny from Hate Five Six had a crazy experience in a similar way in Philly. Mm -hmm. He and he actually posted the, the, the picture he he was at the protests in Philly that same time. I, I forget if it was the same day or, or the next day. Uh, he got hit in the arm, and you could see the imprint oh, on yeah. his arm uh, with a tear gas canister, which is one of the craziest things I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, when I – dude, they had those flashbang grenades. Yeah. So that was the first pop I heard, and then you see sparks as it shoots out sparks and smoke and whatever. And I was like, oh, fuck. I'm like, they're starting to like, there's like, they're like warning shots, basically. Right. And then they started firing the beanbags or whatever at, at, at the people that were running away. So yeah. I have this other photo that you can see the smoke in the background and mm -hmm. people running. And that's right when it started fucking like the, the beanbags were like hitting the bus. There's like a bus off to right. the side. I was like, dude, I can't imagine that hitting me. Like if that Jeez. hit me, like. That would break my bones, man. Like that's not like. Well, you have I know the guy in yeah. uh, Texas that got hit by one of the rubber bullets, but it hit him in the head, and it actually like dented Practice his head, and he skull. died. Yeah. And, he, and he died. I mean, there's people in but Portland it, who were like losing their eyes, and yeah, they were losing their eyes. They're getting their noses smashed in. Like, yeah. uh, I, I'm, you know. Hey, these people I, are out there fighting the good fight, and I got nothing against the people who got hit. Yeah. Uh, it. I feel bad. I feel bad for them. Yeah, I, I, it's man. It's been a whole year of processing one bad thing after another, and like, oh yeah, having seen some of it up close, it's just like, fuck, man. There's so many weird. Then you know, you wouldn't think it, but California, Southern California here, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of that like super Trump, super pro Trump, like the QAnon shit is big here. Like, oh god. They kind of been they kind of been squashed a bit, but like there was a time when they were like 
open the open the churches and the schools back up burn your masks fucking standing at city hall i have, I have a bunch of photos of those weirdos too and oh they they were like those people were like, like more dangerous than anything else i'm like what do you guys do like what like some of the things that they believe are oh God. cuckoo bananas like we, we've talked about it oh uh, yeah i'm not i that could be a whole other three hours of that <laughs> i i told the story my my girlfriend didn't really know what it was about and she oh asked God. me about she asked me to explain QAnon to her and i was just oh. like I, I gotta tell like, you how much now. time do you have? <laughs> well, not just that, but I said to her, I said, "Listen, once I explain this to you, you can't unknow it, and you're yeah. never gonna be the same for knowing it. Like this shit is going to cause yeah. you brain damage." And she's like looking at me like, "What the fuck?" And and then she's like, "Okay, I, I'm ready." And then I explained it to her, and she just looked at me dumbfounded for a couple minutes and was like, "People really believe this shit?" I'm like, "Yeah." yeah. And she's like, fuck, I don't think I want to live on this planet ones. anymore. Wild yeah, ones, I want to go. <laughs> Hunt Huntington Beach here is like, um, it's kind of the epicenter of that orange, oh, like the God, orange County. I, and, uh, uh, Beach. You know, it's uh, romantic to beach, right? Tito. You, not just Tito. Who? Oh. Hulk Hogan. No, well, fuck <laughs> that guy. Exactly. Fuck Huntington, him. Huntington Beach, interesting place, man. Like I've, I've hung out there. One of my... One of my friends, uh, Matt, the singer for that band, The Bronx, actually, yeah. um, he he lives in Huntington. He's lived in Huntington Beach forever, and he has um, he has a Fourth of July party every year. That's like his thing. Like when they're home, there was a Fourth of July party last time I went. He had rented a dunk tank, and he had <laughs> um, what's his name? The fucking oh, he's a he's a fighter, but he's a wrestler now too. What's his fucking name? Brock Matt Riddle. What? What? Matt Brock Lesnar or, or Brock Matt Lesnar. Riddle? No, no. Um, oh, this is gonna kill me. Uh, Ken Shamrock? No, not Shamrock. He's Kane like into he, he's like into he's into like fucking hardcore and shit and metal. Um. And oh, uh, 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 Josh Barnett. Uh, Barnett. Yeah. Oh so yeah, Bar yeah, yeah, yeah. So Barnett's there, and he's the one dunking people. So he's oh, like. <laughs> So I got, I got what are you going to do? I got, what are you going to do? I got to oh, send shit. photos of you know, that. Like, yeah, you're just going to take it. Throw, like, throwing fucking fastballs at like random kids. Like, they just come off the street like, ah, what am I? Let, let me go in the dunk tank. I want to get dunked, you know? Like, I'm, this I'm dude's, surprised he bothered with the fastballs and didn't just like, just like punch it. <laughs> like dunk people with his fucking hand. Just, mm. just dunked. Um, so, oh, yeah. Wow. So, like, that was, that was a couple years ago. And I already, it was weird. I remember... We were there, you know, like during the day, we're just drinking and partying and grilling and everyone's hammered. And we're like, let's go. To the, we're going to go to the beach and watch the fireworks. He lives like a few blocks from the beach. Uh -huh. And I remember there was this group of people on a corner waving flags. And it was the first time I ever saw Q, like Q. And I was like, what oh, the fuck is that? I didn't know what it was. I was like, I don't know. I'm like, that. I was like, it's some weird, some weird um, branch of like weird MAGA Trump shit. Some weird cult shit. And they were all like, you know, they're where they're flying the USA things and just like they were and it was I clearly remember Q. This was like two this would have been 2018 or 2019. The first time I ever saw it, and I was like, what the fuck is that? And then I was like too I was just too hammered to care, but I was like, <laughs> what are these people doing? Who cares? Get the fuck out of here. It's Fourth of July, you know, just like, like let's go blow shit up. And uh, that was in Huntington Beach, so like they're they're there, they're like all around there. Wow, it's fucking weird, 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 weird. Yeah, that's how it is. But it's like you wouldn't think it because it's like, you know, you think California, you think like beaches and it's pretty liberal here and whatever. But Orange County is historically not like Orange County and like the beach towns. There's, I mean, those are all like like historically like the suicidal guys and whatever fighting nazis you know like yeah that was like the event like venice beach like venice beach. legit just had straight up out in the open fucking dudes rocking swastikas you know different time <laughs> i mean shit was fucking weird but it's like it has that it still has that kind of like menacing feel to it even though you're at the beach you still feel yeah. a little it's like it feels a little dirty you know like mm -hmm. when i go around there and i go i go shoot there a lot and I know the characters, I see them around, but there's some that are like, 
I don't trust this dude, man. That leathery old fucking <laughs> first sunburnt motherfucker with no teeth. Like that dude's scary, you know? Like he's scarier than any anyone else I could imagine. Wow. Yeah, that shit and it's real. They're they're, they're drifters and all sorts of weirdos. That's wild. Yo. That's 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 life here. <laughs> <laughs> you like it out there more than here? I mean, at this point, um yeah, I'm, I'm just like I'm I'm used to it. I, I feel like there's got to be some sort of in between for me. Like, I don't think I'm a full LA guy. I mean, I like it here, and I I've I take back all the shit I talked on it over the years. You know, like <laughs> just you know, you know how it is. You're from New York. You got to talk shit on LA. It's just, you yeah. got to talk. You talk shit on LA and Boston. That's just like how it goes. Like, you know. But like I to live here now, and I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't fully understand this city. You know. Yeah. There's uh, there's no, parts of it to me like. There's a lot of it that's like to me. I, I drive around. I'm like, this is like Queens, you know. Like, <laughs> it feels like this, like suburban. But then it's like you're in like one district where it's like this is just, you know, this is Chinese, and then like a block later it's all Jamaicans, and you know, it's like yeah. it's the same shit, you know. It's just it doesn't snow. <laughs> that's the only thing. It never snows. Yeah, that is, I'm <laughs> sure. I'm sure that's a plus for a lot of people. Hey, I yeah. that so I almost moved to L. A. Like, I almost did it. When I bought the house that I live in now, it, I was moving out of the house with that girl that has my fucking piano. And I was trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life. And the only thing that kept me here in New Jersey is that both my parents were uh, starting to get older. And I didn't want to have to be commuting back and forth from California to like keep an eye on them. Yeah. And, you know, it turns out I made the right decision because just th- less than three years ago, my dad had, like, a major issue. And if I had been in L.A., there would have literally there would literally be no one here to help take care of him because technically my sister refuses to do it and there's no one else. It's me or his wife. So when she's not available, it's me. I, th- I think about stuff like that, too, because my family lives in Florida now. Like, my, I have no family connection to new york really at all anymore so i don't have any reason to go there but i do have to go to florida you know like florida and again knock on fucking the biggest piece of wood but like you know my parents are they're in their 70s but they're you know they're healthy and they get Uh they're doing their thing my dad's you know he's got it in him to send me his fucking vhs tapes to (laughs) to do you know whatever but like i don't know like i Sometimes I do wish I was closer and I'm like, but I'm like, man, I don't, I don't want to be in Florida. I'll tell you that. No, <laughs> yeah. like, Florida. It's the worst place on earth. <laughs> I like that everyone immediately is like, yeah, you know, you're right. You're right. <laughs> I don't, I don't hate Florida like Len does, but, but like, I, I, hate it. I, I can't see myself not, living down there. It's not my favorite. No. I mean, the older I get though, the more I'm like, nah, eh, maybe I can, maybe I can, <laughs> maybe I can stomach it, you know, like. I know, I know that I wouldn't make it, but more than three days. Like I can't be in Florida for more than three days. At my max. I don't want to say it too loud. Oh, well, my girlfriend's probably asleep by now. But she's if I she heard me saying there was even a remote chance that I want to move to Florida, she'd be we'd be packing boxes tonight. <laughs> she, she, she's ready to go. She move. I mean, she's from Wisconsin, and it's either she wants to be near her family or my family. So, and I'm like, well, I'm like, to me. Just for me personally, the like the compromise is Chicago, just because I've lived there before. And it's a big yeah. city that I really do like a lot. I like love Chicago. Yeah, and I do like Chicago. I'd, and I'd find myself, I'd personally find myself moving there, back there before I move back to New York, for real. Like I, it's not just because it's cheaper, but like I just for her it would be closer to her family. That would be the compromise. I can't live in Wisconsin. Yeah. I'll tell you that. Oh, that God. is off the, that. No. off the off the table. Just where from where it is, it's like <laughs> real. It's real far away too. It's real like I'm talking like I'll tell it's you closer right now. to it's closer to Never. Canada than it's to yeah. So that's not happening. But Chicago could happen, and maybe if I'm old enough, uh, you know, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I could go to Florida. <laughs> go live in West Palm or something. You know. Whatever. Yeah, I, I know. I would never make it there. It no. just wouldn't work out for me. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I could live long term in Florida. I could stay down there for a couple of days, three yeah. days max. Go, for me. go to Disney or something. Yeah, I could do more than that. I could. I could do a week. Like 
My family used to go down there when I was a kid and do two weeks. No, oh, God. You know, well, I just myself sorry. Into the fucking just lost myself alligator. there for a second. I throw myself right in with the alligators. Two weeks. <laughs> you, hey, did I, I'm, I'm not muted or anything. I'm no, like, you're good. No, you're okay. good. Okay. Okay. You're, you're I thought I... Uh, uh, I, I thought I did so, I did something weird there. You 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 video Dude, I do dropped something for weird a all the time. Yeah. Oh, okay. I just I I leaned on my keyboard and it just did something I do weird. I do a couple of weird things before I even get out of bed in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> don't ask. Oh shit. Uh, oh my god. Worry, How's this coming. fucking late for you guys already, man? You guys oh, go dude, late night. This, this, we go late in this. <laughs> well, I got to make dinner at some point yeah. too. Yeah. Well, well, so. <laughs> listen. Brian, thank you for yeah. coming on because this is a fucking awesome yeah, it's conversation. Fun, man. I love dude, catching if, up if with any, you, dude. If any, and it, I could do this again. Some other major hardcore event takes place that we need to uh, analyze. You'd let me know because <laughs> I'll come on here and I'll talk about it. I'll talk about that, and you know, maybe I'll go. I'll finish the Mandalorian, and I can talk about that next time too. Oh, oh you I'm with that. Must I'm, I'm definitely with that. If that's start, uh, that's got to be next on my list. No, I got to do like less serious topics. I can't be talking about fucking COVID and Freddie Mabal. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Star whoa, whoa. Wars is pretty serious for some people. Let me tell you. It's I need it to be. To I need it to be entertainment, <laughs> though. You know, like entertainment based. Well, I talk now, to you. Now, you can also argue that it's also not entertainment. It's a, a life, a lifestyle. <laughs> listen, if you start <laughs> start watching the Marvel movies, then we can really talk. <laughs> I think we could really right. go for a while. Uh, Les got to catch up on that too. I think. My, uh, I'm never I don't know. I, do it. I'm it's not, not on. Happen. <laughs> well, you've never watched them. I, I so looking I've at. I've seen the, a couple, but I, like I've seen a couple them. like random yeah. ones, but I, I haven't sat through the whole thing. And at this point, it's too fucking late. I'm not going through all. No, that. you're gonna you're gonna do it. I mean, if this was like six months ago, I definitely would have really gave it a go. My yeah. uh, guitarist Ben is. He's doing it, and he and it's only because so we've been playing with this other drummer, just like on and off, and that dude is super into the Marvel universe, and he oh, he like like if I express like this much like tight like you know my fingers are almost touching interest, he is like he goes goes on, and I'm like yo yo slow down I don't know <laughs> anything you're talking about. He's like you got to watch it. This is a, this is a, go in this order or whatever. He's like, or you just watch it in the theatrical order. You can skip this one. I'm like, oh my god! Like you're like, hey, 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 chill. And yeah, Ben's chill. doing it right now. Ben's like, he's like 20 deep right now. There's like what is it, like 30 movies or something. Uh, uh, 20 something at this point. I mean, I've yeah. seen them all multiple times. Most of them in the theater, like opening weekend. But I, yeah. I'm not. I'm not trying to sell people on it necessarily. But like, if a conversation starts, I'm all in. Like. Like my girl yeah. watched, she watched with me, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. She had no idea what. Like she's seen a couple because since we started dating, the movies that came out, like she went with me and and was kind of confused. But <laughs> Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and then she's like, I want to see all the Captain America movies. I'm like, bet, let's do it. <laughs> so we watched. Well, all I guess of them that's and she's that just might... like, whoa. That might be my next task before I do Mandalorian. I think I I, 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 wanna... I know. I know a few people who have taken quarantine time and yeah. gone one at a time. I'm, run, I'm running out of time, dude. I got, I got some. I do have yeah, some stuff coming up, so I better get. I better. Uh, or I'm going to be sitting in a tour bus, you know, in July or August or whatever, just like watching it on a laptop. It's not going to be as gratifying as doing it from my couch. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not quite. But listen, if you got Disney Plus, it's all there. I do. Yeah, so I mean, I, I do. I do all. via. I do via a family member. So, shout out to my sister Stacy for nice. hooking up, hooking up to Disney Plus. <laughs> it's always good. Sharing the streaming is always important. Hey man, she she gets um she gets Netflix for me. So we, we're oh, we're even. That's cool. Listen, there's so many of them now. The, fa- the family plan. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Got to do listen, it. Brian, thanks for coming on, yeah. man. I appreciate it. Very um, cool, man. Now, you still selling photo prints? I am. Right now, I mean, by the time this comes out, I should have my store back up. I, I closed it to revamp everything just because okay. I was kind of like, I want to do all new shit that's not been up. And I kind of wanted to cut out the whole, like, request to print kind of thing. I mean, I yeah. might still do it. I don't know. 
I just kind of wanted to take some time. I've just been doing a lot of guitar work lately, so I can't really. De- I, it's hard for me to flip back and forth. Balance, doing, yeah. Yeah. So like, I had this one dude brought me like twenty something guitars, and I was just working my ass off on that. So like, the prints are gonna come back. So by the time this comes out, it should be back so where, up. I'm, where can people like, find that? That's at briandiazphoto.com. The site is still up. Just um, the the store is empty right now, but it'll it'll fill back up. I have a few things I'm gonna throw in there, so it'll be revamped shortly. Revamped, it's coming coming soon. And, and hopefully, then, yeah, so hopefully you'll be out on tour, yeah. maybe. Um, I mean, hopefully that's something that that uh, we can confirm. I mean, at this point, it's like uh, no one said no, so. I think oh. we're just kind of barreling ahead as if it's going to happen. I mean, maybe it could, you know, it could be like the day before, and they'd be like, "Well, it's canceled," and uh-huh. I wouldn't be surprised. But it would be a it would be a letdown. But yeah, we happens. Well, like yeah. we said, we're in that weird, uneasy space area. right now. Yeah. So some stuff is going to get canceled. Hopefully, yours is going full blast, so you can Hopefully. get back to doing what you love doing. Yes, sir. Thanks again, man. I All appreciate right, man. it, and, Thank and you so much. we'll get nice you on again and and talk to you about yeah, anything man. Star Wars, Marvel, whatever. I don't care. Well, we you know, just... we'll we'll talk. We'll talk. Well, I'll, I'll probably have been at that death match thing, so I could talk about that a little oh, bit. Oh yeah, that, what that it's like. What it's like getting bled on in the COVID era. Oh, God. <laughs> Len, yeah, I'm trying uh, to see. I might I might be going man. to see something in Jersey in June. We'll see. Oh, there you I'm, go. I'm looking into it because I've. I haven't seen GCW live yet. It's a good so one. That's high They're on good. my list post uh, COVID. But they've been doing some stuff in Atlantic City, so I'm trying to get down there eventually this summer. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Right. Anyway, thank you again, Brian. Thank you again. And thank you. Ben. I am Gary Mutley. He is Len Carmichael. We are the upgrade, the upgrade podcast.net for all the links and all that fun stuff. And we'll see you again soon. Peace. 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 Later.